pray all is well. Yes. With everyone, it's been two weeks. It has. It since has. Since we have been <laughs> predisposed. Yes. Yes, indeed. And so we are back and we are ready to dialogue and talk and have some interesting conversations. Got a special guest for you guys yep. today. Yep. <laughs> yep. Papa duties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she got to do her first live with us. <laughs> so we are going to give you a moment, and I'm going to just yes. take this time to share it on several other platforms. So we ask that you join, share, invite other couples. Uh, they don't have to be married, but anyone in relationships. Because I believe that regardless of whether or not you're married, 10, 15, 5, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. A marriage is a relationship and always growing. And so we want to have some interesting dialogue and comments and tips. Yes. All right. Are y'all in? <laughs> you ready to get started? So it's been a while and so our records probably have fallen off, but we are here. Yes. So yes. let's get started. You just catch the replay. Yep, if you're watching this on the replay, Fridays, uh, Saturdays at 5 p.m., uh, Marriage Moment Tip with the Nobles, sort of watch parties. They do watch parties. I know when Facebook first came out, everybody was trying to do watch parties. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, today's you know, topic. Papa and, and Gram Grammy Goose. Yes. I got my little <laughs> notes here. So, today's topic is going to be about triggers. Do you know what triggers your spouse? Do you know the triggers that your spouse may have? And if so, what do you do about them? Do you ignore them? Um, do you take uh, your spouse triggers seriously? Do you, are you sensitive to their needs and their wants and desires? Uh, so what about those triggers? What about those triggers? And that's what we're talking about tonight. So first I wanted to define what trigger means okay <laughs> so i did do my little research she did some diligence <laughs> she did some do i did some due diligence <laughs> on the word trigger because we need to know it what is. triggers <laughs> what trigger means okay all right so trigger means it is something that affects your emotional state okay. of being your emotional state uh, of being mm -hmm. and it causes extreme overwhelm uh overwhelmness or distress okay and it affects your ability to remain present in the moment it may bring up specific thought a thought pattern or influences your behavior so triggers do influence your behavior and it takes you out of the moment the present moment it okay. puts you someplace else when you are triggered. So that's what we want to talk about. So now that you know the definition of what um, trigger means, it causes you to go somewhere else and to put you in another state of being, uh, take you out of that, that moment, okay? And it provokes uh, a thought, a specific thought pattern or influences your current behavior or your present can, behavior. Can I give a short definition? Yeah, he have a different definition. What makes the gun go off? <laughs> That's what a trigger is. Mm -hmm. A trigger and a gun is what makes the gun go off. Okay. The bullet that the bullet is already in the gun. Okay. And then in the you pull the trigger mm -hmm. and the hammer hits the shell cartridge and it and it fires off. All right. So what make your spouse go off? And what are the things and what do you do uh and how to identify them? Okay. Uh because a lot of a lot of triggers you know, hide for a long time. Mm -hmm. It just takes the right thing to happen right. for the spouse to shoot the gun, it's, make the gun. Yeah, <laughs> it can be. It can definitely be a build up. Hello, Pastor Mitchell. Hey, Pastor Mitchell. Yeah. So, Thank you for joining y'all here. I'm glad right. you take them seriously because some people do not take them seriously, and um, I think all of us could do a better job with taking triggers more seriously. So why is why why is it necessary to identify the triggers though? Because, because some people we take may them for think granted. This, this is not this is not applicable or can be applied, but 
Why is it necessary? Because we take we take them for granted. We take a lot of things for granted in our marriage. And we just feel like, well, the husband for a long time I used to say, Well, you know me. You you know, you should you should understand, you know. Right. Because you know this is me. This is how I am. And I just kinda expected people around me to deal with whatever I dealt. Whatever hand I dealt, I expected them to deal with it, you know, because it was me. And so whether it triggered you or not. You know, okay. so I had to um, apologize to, um, for that and kind of take ownership of, of of allowing that to take place. Because my my girls used to tell me all the time, um, you know, that I would be aggravating them, you know, certain things that I would do or say. And it could also be a nagging or it could be a pet peeve. Most of, yeah, us, know pet it, peeve. Most of yeah. us know it as or they identify a trigger with um a pet peeve yeah you know? so and so when and, and 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 it makes sure it gets your spouse or it gets your partner mm -hmm. out of the normal uh normal uh normal character triggers mm -hmm. uh provoke um it takes them out of character mm -hmm. and so it's necessary to address tr triggers so that when the trigger goes off when the gun goes off you'll know how to respond uh and we can deal with hurt feelings mm -hmm. uh disappointments look at her she <laughs> finished y'all i got a girl and and so if you identify the triggers if you know and you know that there's a trigger mm -hmm. what do you do when it, when it occurs what do right. you do when it happens right and so a lot of people feelings get hurt people get angry they get mad mm -hmm. but they don't they don't track back to see that they that they that they trigger something right in your mate y'all yeah. <laughs> she gonna we she multitasking gonna, over yeah, here y'all yeah. okay so also let's talk about some of the things that could cause um, someone to trigger so i have a list of things here um let's just say if <clears throat> you got cursed out as a child all the time by your parents mm -hmm. and you just fed up with it and it just makes you so angry it makes you feel belittled you know and then now your spouse is cursing at you or cursing you out that could very well be a trigger right you know and then it will make you want to react it gets you out of your present state mm -hmm. and it causes you to it'll affect your emotional state of being mm -hmm. um so, and it can cause you to be stressed or, or what have you, or to react in a, a way that you normally do not act. Mm -hmm. uh, it changes your current behavior. Mm -hmm. That's the definition that I got, you know. When, for what? When researching the oh, truth. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to use my definition. Oh, we're going to use, okay. Okay, and what about, if what if your spouse, if, if you marry a hot-tempered spouse mm -hmm. and they're quick to get angry, okay, uh, yes, yeah, the Bible say get angry, but sin not. But we sometimes we don't want to see that anger because sometimes that anger that anger can be very scary. Mm -hmm. Let's just say your reactions to things that you do when you get angry. Do you all have you all ever heard of a spouse spitting on another spouse? Spitting, spitting at, spitting on for real, being childlike. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Uh, putting their hands on them. Yeah, that all that's is a, a form of a. a now spitting on is a form of abuse too That's you abusive. know abusive i mean you're belittling them what if you raise your hand up oh y'all mm -hmm. can't see that hand <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what if i do this and you know at my husband he didn't see it mm -hmm. you know but if, if i do that it's, you know like you raise your hand mm -hmm. towards or you actually hit what if you slap i i mean there are some spouses i you know i don't know what kind yeah. of marriage be going on but you know they they be beating you know on their spouse or hitting or slapping so those can very well be um or the anger from the other spouse could trigger that person to to hit them right now is it right no it's not right but they can say well i'm sorry you know you hear hear about you know when the spouse say uh, i'm sorry i didn't mean to hit you you just made me so mad right you right. know i was just so angry you right. know, you said the wrong thing to me, and I I just overreacted it, and then they end up hitting or slapping their spouse or or beating them up. You know, so that's all abusive. That's how all that abuse starts. 
it starts with I believe I believe abuse and it's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I believe that abusive relationship can starts with triggers. Yeah, you know? there's there's something that triggers a behavior. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important. That's why I think it's important that before you marry someone, you date them long enough mm -hmm. to see because sometimes things can lay dormant in a person mm -hmm. for so long it takes that right it's, it just takes the right trigger. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people hide you know, when you're in relationships, you try to date someone, you try to get to know them, you're trying to put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Your best your best face is put forward. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people be wearing she <laughs> thinks she, 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 she think talking, talking about yeah. She a lot of times a lot of times people be wearing masks. Yeah. And so what what is what does it take to trigger uh that mask coming off so you can see, you know, who 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 is the person for real behind the mask? Right. And so and oftentimes we're we are a year, two years, three years into the relationship and something triggers, something happens, you, you say something, you do something, you behave in certain way. Yeah, baby. You behave in a certain way. She's saying that hey, we ain't we ain't putting up with this. You behave in a certain way and it triggers something. And it and the other spouse. Uh, the other person get their feelings hurt. Yeah. But you didn't know that what you said, what you did, how looks can be a trigger. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's based on past hurts and mm -hmm. and and past things in the past and experiences. Yeah. Cause I know, I know and I give an example that mm -hmm. for a long time, um, then if I said something or did something, he would give me a certain look. Mm -hmm. And that just irked me to the core. You know, it was a trigger for me because it made, I had, I think now, high, look at hindsight, going back, I think maybe in school, you know, in high school or middle school, if I said something that may have been um, silly or naive mm -hmm. or something like that, or something that people felt like didn't make sense, you know, because I used to get picked on uh, in school too. Mm -hmm. And so they would look at me like, oh, you know, like, mm -hmm. what you saying? What you talking about? You know? And so not letting my husband did that, but right. he, if he just did a little part, if he said, if he, if he frowned up his eyebrow, and that's <laughs> not even, that's not even as half as what the kids would do to right. me back in school, they did that and more. But if he would just do a partial, a part of it, by mm -hmm. just frying up his eyebrows, like trying to understand what I'm saying, like you know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it would trigger me, and it, it and then it would make me feel like he's trying to say that I don't know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and so and then that would hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. So that was a trigger for me. And then you, know? you would respond in a certain way towards him, mm -hmm. and then there you go. Now you got the fight going on. Yes. Now you going. <laughs> now you got the back and forth, mm -hmm. and me not knowing that there was a trigger, there was something that. It was something that triggered that, right. and it was the look based on whatever happened in the past. Yeah, it was the look, just a simple look. Yeah, tri triggered me. Yeah, you know, and so I, you know, so it it doesn't take a lot. It, yeah. It, it, but it does take communication, and you you do really need to share what gets on your nerves. You know, what yeah. aggravates. You know, you you need to share that with your spouse. But people, you know, people don't. You know, when you're dating, especially when you're dating. And then sometimes, oftentimes when you're married, those those things are sensitive spots. Mm -hmm. And we talk about being vulnerable and transparent with our spouses. Mm -hmm. You know, trusting somebody with whatever that pain is or whatever that hurt is. Mm -hmm. To say that when you say this, you reminded me of something that happened in the past right. that really that has not been resolved. Mm -hmm. And so it's still triggering. Mm -hmm. And the couples don't talk enough and we really don't become transparent. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to become really vulnerable. You want to talk, baby. You got <laughs> something you want to say, I'm triggering something from you. <laughs> then, you know, and so it's teaching. You have to, you have to learn how to trust. Mm -hmm. And watch this. We all put our, try to put our best face forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the husband, the man, mm -hmm. you the wife, the woman. We're all trying to, we all trying to satisfy these roles. Mm -hmm. When in fact, there's things in our lives that trigger us to not be our perfect self. Yes, can you be vulnerable? Can you be vulnerable? Uh, can you can you actually admit that this is a trigger? Hmm. 
this is something that really that's this is something that really affects me that if you do this i am going to get out of the normal character mm -hmm. that you that that i present to you right. yeah what are some other tricks okay, i got some more so we well we can have a yeah. real trick we're not gonna community. be on there long yeah good, you can good. tell you know why <laughs> Okay, so another trigger would be, what about talking about the other person's family? Oh, boy. Talking about their in-laws. You don't talk about my mama, and you don't talk about my dad. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And so you're talking about the in-laws. You're talking about the, the, the sister or the brother. I mean, that's just something. It crosses the line, you know, and it's, a, it's the form of disrespect. But at the same time, if you're a family, if you're a spouse, a husband and wife, you probably let's just say um an in-law is uh, stepped on your toes and you want to tell me about how you feel right and well if i'm not receptive to that or okay. open to that you know then that could be a trigger and i don't want, go off. i don't want it because i may have my wall up and i don't want to hear you talking about my in-laws at all mm -hmm. and i just want you to sit there Are and you? take it mm -hmm. but that's from a lack of communication we didn't set boundaries oh you know? wow so that could that could go back to another segment where um you know we didn't <laughs> we didn't set boundaries at all and so that could be a trick mm -hmm. indeed and so another thing um would be uh what about going through your spouse purse or, 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 or wallet or wallet you know i i frown on it <laughs> it, it does trigger me a little bit because i just feel like I don't want my husband going through my purse because he doesn't put things back in place. Like if he takes something out, <clears throat> if he's looking in my purse, he takes something out. And when I come back in, what was in there is on the bed or what was in there is like, he takes it out looking for something. But why is that but, a trigger though? What, what because is you trigger? don't put it back. <laughs> so is it me or is it you it's in you. terms of your order? You, you know, you want things in order. I, See, want things, this... I want you to put things back the way they were found. See, you know, and so this, this, and this is the issue when we talk about triggers, we try to put the blame on the other person, but actually something happened in the, it could have been possession. Yeah, I hear that. Somebody stole a possession no. in the past, and now, now everything that one, you is can't on. Use, you can't use that one. Well, I mean, why well, can't you? Because <laughs> there was nothing in the past that caused well, me to have a trigger. <laughs> they got, you know, I'm so is out. it me or is it? You know. Some things, some things you may not have anything in the past. That <laughs> so maybe we, maybe that's not a trigger. Maybe that's just a pet peeve. I think it's a difference. I think triggers, like like the definition said, triggers have things um, that something that affects your emotional. State. Well, mm -hmm. something that affects your emotional state. It really didn't say that it had to stem from the past, though. The definition didn't say it had to come from the past. But I believe that triggers are some things that has um, like a build up. Yeah. I think a pet peeve is just something that you grow not to like, you know, something that you just, you can grow into it. But like going through your wife's purse is okay. I don't mind. I don't have a problem with my husband going through my purse. That's not a pet peeve for me. That's not a trigger for me. It's when he doesn't put the things back in it, then, you know, that's but but I, that's real. I mean, that's it's it's a trigger for you. Well, I mean, but the thing is, what we're trying to, we what we want to do is now that I know this, mm -hmm. is it you know I have to correct my behavior so I the gun won't go off. Yes. You know, so I don't. You know, I if I go in your purse, I put things back. Yes. And that so then that won't be the gun won't go off. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So what about going through your spouse's phone? Is that a trigger? Is that a trigger? Somebody may have a, somebody. Yes, I mean if 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 I'm if I'm possessive, mm -hmm. and what's mine is mine, and I am the type of person that I'm private, and mm -hmm. I don't want and I don't want people going through my private stuff, including my my yeah, spouse. Yeah. We finna trigger something, y'all. Then <laughs> then yes, that could be a trick. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and um. Some some uh, spouses may feel like it's a form of distrust, like you don't mm -hmm. trust me, and they could trigger a thought pattern in in, in their mind, and they would think that you're saying, um, "I'll carry on mm -hmm. <laughs> until he gets back." Okay, so if you are if you are um, going through my phone, then that could trigger that could 
that can make me have some type of trigger because I may feel like you don't trust me. And then maybe my last relationship, whether it was a last uh, relate uh, spouse or marriage, you know, maybe I have been married before, or maybe it was just a, a fiance or just a high school relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, whatever it was, maybe that last person did not trust you or they found that you was a cheater or they found or you found something out with them and so just going through your phone could just very well be a trigger so that could very you know that could cause you to um be triggered also um another one is um <laughs> cut it on the lights while you're asleep does that trigger you is that is that a trigger is that a trigger for you um sometimes if i'm asleep and i i'm very tired i was very tired the night before and i need my rest then yes if my husband cuts on the lights then i am um i am triggered by that and i start fussing cut off the lights you know cut on the bathroom like cut on the, you know don't cut on the light. it wakes the person up or if he places his foot on the um edge of the bed trying to put a shoe on well it, it's gonna cause him to shake the bed well i'm in the bed so yes that's gonna trigger me that that's pet peeve so um <laughs> i did say i was gonna buy him a a little bench a foot a foot um bench you know to do but i just you know how do you rectify that those are pet peeves those are triggers and you need to sit down and talk about it and I don't think you should actually ignore the pet peeve. You shouldn't just say, well, this is how it is. Deal with it. And uh, that does make a lot of um, married couples upset or any couple. It makes them upset if you feel like that the other person, is, that the partner is not um, being sensitive to your needs. You definitely need to talk about it and be sensitive to the other person's needs. Another one would be... Oh, yelling or raising your voice at your spouse. Okay. Now, I know a lot of couples that actually end up fussing and fighting verbally, uh, raising their voice, yelling all the time. That that could be a trigger as well, because there may have been some times where while they were growing up. That they got fussed at, you know, by their parents. The parent was yelling. A lot of, you know, every parent is not calm. Every, you know, there are some parents that do um, fuss at their children. They yell at their children. They curse at their children. Um, you know, and other things too. You know, they they whip them or, you know, it's, it that's that's a whole nother story. But if you are being verbally abused then yelling and fussing and cursing at your spouse would fit that category you know you're talking that you're trying you're demeaning them all of those things can be a trigger if that person grew up in a household where their parents did it to them or whether their older sibling did it to them as well so if they've been through it before then they they don't want to go through it again so any little thing that happens if you yell at your spouse then that's going to be a trigger that's going to set them back and then that could cause them to leave you know you don't even have to do anything um out of the ordinary out of what you think is ordinary they may end up leaving anyway you know and and you'll wonder like i just yelled one time but if it was a trigger it's going to hit, hit close to home so you definitely need to, that is why it's very important that you sit down and you discuss these things. You make sure that you all have communicated very well. What is a trigger? If you're having premarital counseling sessions, definitely talk about the trigger. What is the number one thing that will get on your nerves? What is a, a deal breaker? We talked about that an, uh, one episode, one or two episodes ago. So what is a deal breaker in your marriage? Those deal breakers definitely can turn into triggers you know you don't want your spouse yelling at you you don't want your spouse raising their voice at you and you don't want them um you don't want like for me don't turn on the light <laughs> or give them a warning before you know give them a warning 
And then um, we also put, I'm not sure if my husband's coming back because he has the grand, the grandbaby. So, and like I said, we're not going to be on here long. We're almost um, ready to end. I don't know if he's coming back or not. But the other one that um, I wanted to mention is uh, interrupting your spouse's sense. Now, my husband probably have a, a lot to say about that one because I interrupt his sentences a lot and he interrupt my sentences. We're still working on that. It's a work in progress for us. Um, are you bad? Yes, yes. <laughs> you want to have something to say? Because we're almost yes, ready to we go. We're getting ready where to go. We we're on the last one. Interrupting your spouse's sentences. Yes, you know, finishing finishing some pe people's sentences off, uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that sometimes can be a trigger. And y'all, what we what we want to what we're trying to emphasize is the fact that get to know what triggers uh, your spouse. All right, remember a trigger. It is not the bullet that caused the bullet caused the injury, but it was when that trigger was pulled that the hammer hits the hits in the back of the bullet and it goes off. So what's underneath? I think that the important thing is what's underneath causing the behavior. Mm -hmm. And most of us in counseling, most of us in therapy know it as cognitive behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the iceberg above the water that sunk the Titanic. Mm -hmm. It was the iceberg below the water. And a lot, oftentimes when it comes down to marriages failing, relationships failing, uh, it's the iceberg. It is the it is the hidden things below the water. Yes. And so above the water is the behavior. But what causes the behavior, and oftentimes icebergs are much more bigger beneath the surface mm -hmm. than all, they are above. So when we talk about triggers, we're not talking about the behavior mm -hmm. that that caused me to do it. We're talking about what what triggered it, what is underneath. Right. And so a lot of times, and, and the one like finishing all people's sentences, mm -hmm. for example, that's the behavior, right? Mm -hmm. But why is that a trigger for me? Because maybe when I was growing up in school, uh, I, I didn't get an opportunity to talk. I was shy. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that I'm an adult, that's coming back now. And it's a trigger for some type of behavior, mm -hmm. uh, especially if, you know, you was raised up in a household or in previous relationships, whatever it may be, that you wasn't allowed to, you know, people make decisions for you. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm in this relationship with you, now that I'm in this marriage, when you do that, that's going to trigger something. Mm -hmm. And so couples need to really sit down and watch this. And sometimes it's not, sometimes it may not be just sitting down. Right. Oftentimes it may just be me filing it that, you know what? Because that's a real behavior. Mm -hmm. Me filing it, someone saying, you know what? What I just did, you know, triggered something. And I don't want that gun to go off no more. So I don't do whatever I did. To trigger that behavior and you know another thought would be um because we're talking about it being a build-up mm -hmm. so we always suggest that uh you do premarital counseling mm -hmm. yep. and um we say that every every live that we go on and we also talk about uh because it can be a build-up but what if uh you talk about certain things and maybe those certain topics are not discussed in your premarital uh, counseling. So I said all that to say this, there may be some things that you miss in the premarital counseling that you may not even find out until after you get married and you start living together and you start mm -hmm. getting to know your spouse because sometimes just living yes. with them, you know, especially if you don't um, do a pre-living arrangement before you get married. Right. You know? And so you, when you live with them, you start looking at certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, you start, if you was a, a clean person and 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 your parents made you you know keep the house clean from spick and span or either mm -hmm. you used to do it in your own apartment before you got married and then when you marry your spouse he or she leave clothes everywhere or oh yeah or they or they don't um they leave the toothbrush or the it can be something as easy as leaving the toothpaste um top off yep. you know little things like that could oh, nag yeah. or get on to Oh, uh, yeah. uh, the spouses, um, no, hey Danielle, and hey Stephen, hey Danielle, um, hey Stephen, take care for joining us. Little things like that could get on the spouse's nerves, mm -hmm. and it could trigger a, a person. But who would think to talk about that in premarital counseling? Right, so, that's right. And then, especially if you're not living with them 
ahead of yep. time. So you may find out some things later. So it's best to not not say, I'm going to just let that slide because it's small. Yep. It's those small things. Oh, yeah. It's those small, those little things. Yep. It's small. <laughs> yeah, even the scripture said you took it out. The, the, the Bible says to, it's the small foxes that yep. the spoil the vine. Yes. It's in the fox usually dig holes underneath mm -hmm. the crop. Mm -hmm. And when the farmer will think he has fruit, it, he touches the he touches the stalk, right. and there's no root, and so it's the small foxes. It's those very small the things. small things. So I would suggest you even bring up the small things. You don't want to sound like a nag, you yeah. know. But if if it's not a big issue, then just put the top back on the toothpaste and don't say anything. You mm -hmm. know, I mean something as simple as yeah, that. Everything don't deserve you don't the have, Yeah, you don't have to have. But if it's something that is constant and you would really like for your spouse. What to do a better job at, mm -hmm. then you can just say that maybe y'all can have a, a time where y'all actually have a, mm -hmm. a free time where it's open session, where y'all can talk and there's no repercussions. You know, maybe sit down and have those moments where y'all can actually talk about those things. Um, I mean, it's, it's sensitive. So mm -hmm. you have to choose, choose the right time and choose the right moment, you know, because you don't want to destroy the vacation. You know. Yeah. Hey, Pastor Ruiz. Hey, Ruiz. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, you don't. Oh, you don't. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. destroy it. And so, talking about it, communication is key. Mm -hmm. But some things, you know, may miss the premarital counseling yeah. session. So, talk about have a, a time you set aside and just say, hey, you know, like once a what year or once a quarter, whatever works for you. Yeah. That y'all sit down and say, hey, we need to, you know, discuss just, some things. How are things going? You know, mm -hmm. we said we called it something else in our other yeah. session. Um, I forget what we called just it. a uh, a wellness check. Wellness Do check. a wellness check with your spouse. Yeah. Find out if everything's going okay. You know, hey babe, you know, let's you know, set aside a wellness um check time. You know. Yeah, you know, I think you you reminded me because we think that uh, being in a relationship is automatic, mm -hmm. but it's not. You mm -hmm. have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. Uh, we think everything is automatic, but it's intentional. It's is doing things to make like any other relationship mm -hmm. grow uh in addressing marriage and relationships is more intimate mm -hmm. you know and and we tend to want to put our best foot forward but if there's any place that you ought to feel vulnerable uh oh y'all we finna have a trigger we we got the great child i got the great child <laughs> in my hand y'all so i'm trying so yeah yeah i think that it, you must you must be intentional right and be sensitive and be aware, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. I, know it, I agree. She must want to say hey to the people. She wants to say hey to the people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in our close, what we're going to say in our close, we're, we're getting ready to, hey, Steve, let's see, Stephen said, describe what communication is to you guys. Some people think just oh, talking is communication. Boy. Well, I would say communication is it's just like what we say give and take it's the you know it's listening it's talking and it's actually hearing what your spouse has to say and then it's being quiet in order for your spouse to give you feedback on what you said to respond so you have to have a time where you actually speak your mind you can voice it and have a safe place where you can voice your opinion uh, and then have a time where your spouse can respond but you don't you can't put communication is not having the walls up when you, and talking you can't just, uh -oh. <laughs> the dog eyes the baby crying <laughs> they all anyway but um i think steven i think um it's it's having those moments where it's a sharing. It's a sharing process. It's not just one party doing all the talking. Um, that's not a form of communication. You got to have some talking, and then you got to have some listening. You got to give your spouse an opportunity to. Um, it's interpretation also makes sure you interpret what's being said. Yes, my husband said it's, right it's all. He's he left out of you. It's also interpreting what your spouse is saying, making sure. That they can interpret and understand what you're saying so give them an opportunity to ask them to share back or respond back to you so you can make sure they understood what you were saying because you could do a whole lot of talking and they don't understand a thing you had to say or they wasn't even listening 
It's active listening also. Communication is not me talking to you and you're on your phone or you watching television while, when I'm trying to speak with you. That's not, well, it's not good communication. Um, it's not active listening as well. Make sure that they hear you. Make sure that they communicate. And guess what? When you communicate, they don't have to agree with you. So it's not trying to get to convince your, not a persuasion, you know, pers like a persuasive essay. You're not trying to always get them to agree with you. You're just trying to get them to hear you and to understand you and to take what you're saying, your thoughts into consideration and be sensitive to your needs. If you can get them to do that, then you have developed a uh, great form of uh, communication, open communication. So that's my definition of um, effective communication. Okay, so, but I think the baby has um, decided to end this live for us because we are we are babysitting tonight. My daughter's at work, so we decided to do our good good um, game and pop ideas for tonight. So my husband had to be pulled away because she's crying. And the dog running around here like he's hungry, like he hasn't eaten. So we're going to go ahead and uh, end it. So you have to catch the replay of what we were talking about tonight. And the main uh, topic, we were talking about triggers. So let's talk about triggers. What are the triggers for your spouse? Do you know the triggers of your spouse? That's what we were talking about. And making sure, and again, the definition that I wrote down when I researched it was, a trigger is something that affects your emotional state and it causes extreme um, overwhelmness or distress and it affects the, your ability to remain present in the moment, you know, and it may bring specific thoughts that uh, thought patterns or influence your behavior. And we talked about all of the, those things that you can go back and um, listen to. We talked about oh, is cursing a trigger, you know, when you curse at your spouse is raising your hand to your spouse um, a trigger is walking away if, do you, if you walk away from your spouse is that a tr is that going to upset you if your spouse walk away does that trigger something is that like a pet peeve um and we also talked about going through each other's purse or personal or phone you know cell phone yelling uh at your spouse and in interrupting their sentences so those are different things that we talked about on today about triggers. Do you know your spouse's, your spouse's triggers? Do you know their pet peeves? If not, then we advise you to sit down with your spouse. Um, take a moment. It doesn't have to be every week. It can be monthly. I would, I would suggest maybe monthly is good. Sit down and do a wellness check with your spouse. Talk to them and ask them. Uh, hey, how's things going? Is everything good with you? Is there anything that you wanted to talk about? Anything that you was concerned about? Is there anything that I've been doing that's getting on your nerves or that you want to um, inform me of? Or you have anything on your mind? Give them that opportunity and open the door and do not put up the wall. Allow them to express themselves to you and tell you what some of those triggers are. You know, ask them specifically. Do they have any pet peeves? Do they have any triggers? Do they have anything that they want to share? Um, because sometimes spouses are afraid, and not just the men um, or the women, sometimes spouses in general are just afraid to share certain things uh, with their spouse because they may deem it negative, negatively, and then the spouse always have their wall up and then they could be intimidating. So open, open that door for your spouse to be able to come in and share what those triggers may be or what those pet peeves may be. And then you all share and y'all take time and set some goals and re reset some goals and talk about ways that y'all can rectify um, those problems or those concerns or those issues. And I think you, you could have a better marriage if you know what those triggers are and you be sensitive um, to those needs. So remember to be patient, be understanding, be sensitive to your spouse's needs and be caring. Amen. Can I get an amen? <laughs> All right, guys. So that is it for today. We are signing out with the nobles. We'll see you next Saturday at five right here on Facebook. 
on the social media and then we'll upload it to youtube and we'll upload it to our tiktok as well thank you guys thank you steve amen love you bye bye